There's a bird hanging out of the general store. It's like trying to bash its way in the window. What the hell? Is that? That's her Is hat. It? Come here. It's Betty's hat. She was here. She could still be in there. Betty? Uh, Betty! Are you sure, Edward? I mean, it's just a hat. Is it even a hat? I'm not sure I... know sure my I... sister's hat, Lissy. I have to get inside. What about the breaking and entering part? I could care less what they call it. You've got to be down for it, right? Find a rock. Let's get in here. Okay, now I think we go for that open window around the side. Here's an open window. You seem eager to break the law. I approve. I thought you might. Uh, it won't budge. Oh, don't be a milk toast. Well, it's stuck. Attaboy, Teddy. You can do this. Pull harder. Believe I'm actually breaking. Whoops, Daisy. <laughs> oh my, Teddy, you're such a sap. Once again, they waited for us to do the physical things before they jumped in. Now I'm just keeping an eye on that. See if they do anything, any sort of physical interaction with the world. World traveler. A cat burglar would, by definition, enter a building Jeez. on a higher floor. The state of this place. Oh, Betty. Edward. I hope you weren't here when. Is this blood? It looks Not like it. Not necessarily human blood. Well, that's all right then. <laughs> what does it say? Barn murder? Someone murdered a barn? Barn means child, and mortar. That's child murder, Edward. They murdered a child? Someone thought so. Probably the same someone who vandalized the store. Yeah, that letter we saw a little while ago said... Like this place was doomed when the children died. I'm not sure how I feel about being in here. Don't be ridiculous. We're all alone. What else do you suggest we do? Same photograph as in the farmhouse. Johan's but... gone. At least I assume he's the one who's been snip. Frederick clearly did not want anything to do with his twin brother. <laughs> Cadencert Odin's milk. Condensed Odin's milk? Nice. Vaseline? Those are the staples. There must be at least ten envelopes, he notices. All of them stamped and addressed, but stuck in perpetual limbo. These were never sent. How long have they been piling up? I received Mrs. Fretland's letter in June, and they received my letter from July. A couple of months. Perhaps the world forgot about Grovik. of drift out of order why hasn't it been fixed perhaps there wasn't much demand for it anymore s o s
Oh boy. If only this thing worked. We could order a boat to come get us. Or, even better, order some hot grub. Ruth? That's the one daughter? What are you doing? Looking for keys. Your life of crime continues. There's a note. Is it written in Viking runes? What does it say? It's from Simon. Casa. I don't know what that word means. Casa. Well, let me look it up. Uh, it means cash desk? According to Google Translate, cash desk. Yai put it means I put. Nurkel is key. He put the key in the casa? Casa. I wish I had my dictionary. The note's addressed to his father. So the key was moved. But where to? Somewhere safer. Or more convenient. Can we really trust your translations? You only started studying a month ago. I spent the summer reading, and I had a lot of free time on the ocean voyage. Come on, how much could you possibly pick up in a few months? You know my mind, it's a sponge. Yeah, that's funny. If you just go by the information you have in-game, then that would probably be a bit harder, but now that I have Google, Google Translate or, you know, if you could read Danish, that'd be super easy. Cash desk. So in here? Or like... Here? Why would Frederick keep a list of what he calls traitors? What did they do to him? Cross him in some way. Why else keep a shit l a list of undesirables? Is this not what? Oh wait, casa. Oh, casa. it even says there. So that's what it means. Cash register. And the number left on it is six six nine. <laughs> And this thing is gorgeous, isn't it? You're a genuine gangster now, old fruit. Don't worry. If you get busted, I'll come visit you in the big house. Wasn't there supposed to be a key? Here it is. It's an old skeleton key. It's 1920, so I guess it's not old in the current time. <laughs> it is her hat. Teddy, uh, I'm not Betty sure that's... Betty was here, and not long ago. Okay, but if that is her hat, what's it doing in a locked storeroom? Another breadcrumb. That's not an answer. I know for sure she was here. That's what matters. You know best, Edward. So, what now? If this is a breadcrumb, where's the next one? There must be a reason her hat's in this room. What's that? A handwritten note. I'm not blind. What does it say, you silly goose? It's hard to read. I'm not sure my translation will be... Johan, you... Nectar. Refuse. You refuse to speak to me, so I write this letter instead. It's from Frederick Fretland to his brother. Uh, Simon did not... Bloody hell. Simon did not murder your Ruth. 
He was fond of his cousin. Ruth. Ruth is the daughter of Anna and Johan, which means the little girl in the photograph at the farmhouse. Oh, Edward. The Fretland girl was murdered. This is simply awful. Simon was working at the farm while I tended to the store. I would have seen him had he passed on the way up to the cliffs. They thought Simon killed Ruth. His own cousin. Ruth was... What's that word? Playing. Ruth was always playing on the rocks below the church. She must have fallen by accident. The note ends there. Frederick never finished it. And Johann never read it. Not that it would have made a difference. If Johann thought... The mob showed up for Simon. His father would have tried to protect him. September 17th. You would have been here, Betty. Rocks below the church. Isn't the church right above us? Edward, come look at this. That's the cliff. Right there. The one in the note? I bet you a million clams. Where? See for yourself. I guess that could be where... Let's check it out! No, Lissy, wait. This doesn't concern us. A little girl died. We're staying in her home, for God's sake. Are you completely without heart? Get yourself up here, Edward Harden, right this minute. Come on, it's an easy climb. This looks very dangerous. Oh, you're a big boy. Start acting like it. It's not Mount Everest. I don't know about this. <laughs> Whoops-a-daisy. What is this? Where little Ruth died. You're being morbid. And this is a distraction. Oh Jesus, there's dried Betty, blood. Not because some girl Edward, got herself. You insensitive brute. You're like the tin woodman, no heart. Uh please look at me when I'm talking to you. And <laughs> Sorry. You know, you've grown cold and mean in that horrid study of yours. With only books and bugs to keep you company for years and years and years. There are other people in this world, you know. It's not all about you. You're going to do this. If not for Ruth, then for us. We're going to figure out what happened to the poor girl. Together. Hell yeah, we are. The flowers, he notices are all wilted. That's been here a while. Didn't you say it happened over a month ago? You'd think her family would have replaced it with fresh flowers. Is that blood? The girl could have hit her head on that rock. There would have been plenty of blood. Oh, that's awful. I think there's something behind it. Yeah, what is that? Is Can that you a... move the rock aside? Is that a doll? A headless doll? Hmm. It must be Ruth's. Where's the head? Maybe the killer also decapitates dolls. Hold on. This pin. This is old. Very old. It looks like something from the from the Viking era. We are in the land of Vikings. This could be a thousand years old. <laughs> it does not belong in a child's doll. Who cares? Ruth is dead and you're obsessing about a rusty old pin? Let's go further up. Maybe we'll find more clues. Come on, old sport. It's not far. Can you wait just one minute so that I can catch my... breath? Huh. Did you follow the same path, Betty? Or am I just stumbling through darkness? The 
higher up we go, the more beautiful the view. You can see clear beyond the edge of the world. Uh, one That was second. Teddy Bear. <laughs> we need to take you out walking more often. So, the girl fell from up here. Was pushed, you mean. Can you see where she fell? Seeing as you're so concerned about me falling out of trees, I wouldn't want to risk falling off a cliff. The stone, he notices, would be the likely terminating point of a fall. If she fell headfirst on that rock, she'd have died instantly. Edward! Honestly! You wanted to learn more. This is you learning more. She hit her head and fell into the bush where I found her doll. Happy now, Alice? I'm not. What was she doing up here in the first place? Playing? She was a child. Children play in dangerous places. There must be more to it. Let's find out where this path leads. No, absolutely not. I don't have time for this nonsense. We're running out of daylight and Betty's still... You're still out there. Goddamn, Lissy can sprint. Lissy, slow down. I can't keep up with you. Who knows what's up there? It's not worth the risk of falling and breaking something. Lissy, are you there? Teddy. Holy shit. Oh, my word. Uh, look away, Lissy. Is this what happened to the villagers? They killed themselves? No, there's something on them. I think they were... Body. I think they were killed. They were probably a traitor. Uh, this is just ghastly. What made him do this? How long has he been... From the state of the body, perhaps a couple of weeks. Depends on temperature and humidity, of course. What does that say? God forgive me. Don't suicides go to hell? Isn't that what your father said when Stop. your mother drowned Don't. herself? Sorry. So that's what happened at the pond? Her mother drowned herself? Also, I guess they maybe weren't murdered. I thought that'd be a sign saying traitor, but no. Who was he? One of the Fretlanders? It's not Johan or Frederick. And he's too old to be Simon. Do you think this has something to do with Ruth? Maybe she came across the hangman before she died. And it scared her. So she ran no. and... This happened later. There's some consolation in that, I guess. Maybe it's the killer. The guilt ate him up and he offed himself. That's just speculation with no basis in fact. There's nothing more to do here. I'm going back. Let the poor soul rest in peace. Does it look like he's resting in peace? You're just going to leave him hanging? You're an insensitive brute. I'm here for Betty. This is... it's tragic, but really none of my oh, concern. Betty, 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 always just Betty. You don't care about anyone else. Yeah, Edward, what the hell's wrong I with you? was me up there. Would you look at me when I'm talking to you? So, what if that was me up there? Would you care then? All you do is obsess over a scarf and, and a hat and... Ugh. It's all I have of Betty. Betty, there she is again. Edward, the hanged man, he's someone. No matter what he did or didn't do, he deserves respect. Would you please just do this one decent deed? If not for me, then for yourself. Or for... For your Betty. What are you doing? You can't just pull him down by his legs. Try loosening the noose. I can't reach that far. I 
Edward's a bit of a dick. been through much worse. Where are the Fretlands, Edward? It's been two days. If they're not back tonight... They're not coming back. Perhaps they left after their daughter died. Was murdered, you mean? Isn't that what we think happened? The simplest solution, he believes, is often the correct one. The villagers believed thoughts? Simon killed Ruth, and so he most likely did. She was probably murdered. And you think Simon did it? Your guess is as good as mine. It could have been an accident. You're really not helping. Can we talk about this tomorrow? I'm sorry. You're exhausted. I, I buried a corpse today, Alice. I know. I'm sorry. Why don't you sleep in the guest bedroom? The couch is fine. The Fretlands could still come home. All right. Just don't come crying to me if you wake up with a crick in your neck. I'll be up for a while, if you feel like talking. I'm dreading the night nightmares and whatever might happen. I don't think we're going to sleep soundly and wake up to a beautiful day tomorrow. I really thought I'd find Betty today. Well, I told you not to get your hopes up, Edward. I mean, we just got here. It's a big place. She could be anywhere. It's just the thought of her alone out there. In the dark. She's a tough cookie. You're Betty. Tougher than you, Teddy Bear. <laughs> that she is. I feel restless. You should sleep. I'm not sure I can. But yes, uh, I'll try. In a bit. The voice acting is fantastic. Oh, I can finally read this now. What did you find? Someone tried to burn this. It's addressed to Mrs. Fretland. My dearest Anna. It's from her sister, Margaret. Frederick's wife. The, the two brothers married sisters, remember? Yes, and it's adorable. Keep reading. I really shouldn't. Really? How else are we going to figure out what happened? Keep reading. My dearest Anna, I miss you so very, very much. The baby is due soon, and I wish for our family to reunite before... Uh, da, da, da. It's been seven years since the dreadful incident at the mine. Can we not convince Frederick and Johann to forgive and forget? Uh, I know there are things Frederick has not told me about what they found and why they parted ways. Their grudge is tearing us all apart. Frederick won't even let me speak to half of our neighbors, accusing them of treason. Uh... He's so very angry and full of regrets. It's eating him up. And we... And we what? The rest is unreadable. Margaret reached out to her sister. But I guess it didn't work. This was written before Simon was born. But burned recently. So someone was trying to cover up all this stuff. So there's another letter upstairs that we can probably read now. Oh, all of these... All these little lanterns are lit. Pretty. Jesus Christ, how'd you get there? I feel restless. You should sleep. I'm not sure I can. 
But yes, uh, I'll try. In a bit. The candles are lit, too. Oh, this one I can read in this way. August 3rd, 1923. This morning I had lemon juice and hot water, with no sugar, instead of tea. I also had half an apple and dry toast. I've been gaining weight lately. I read about this diet in the paper. It's apparently very popular in London. But I'm dreadfully hungry and crave fried eggs and sausages. August 4th. We received an odd letter yesterday, addressed to Johan. It's from an American gentleman, Mr. Edward Harton of Hanover, Massachusetts. The letter was well written and very polite. Mr. Harden received our information from the Ellison police when he requested a contact in Grovik. I do wonder why they gave him Johann's name and not Frederick's. Perhaps because our dear Margaret is no longer with us and I am better prepared to respond in English than Frederick. Mr. Harden inquired about his sister, Elizabeth Harden, who's traveling on her own apparently. She's a journalist. Imagine that, crossing the Atlantic Ocean to write about Norway. It sounds wonderful. The letter said Elizabeth telegraphed her brother from Alisund to inform him that she planned to visit Grovik. Why she'd want to come to this dreary old place, I have no idea. There's nothing here worth writing about anymore. His sister's not arrived yet. If she had, I would have tired her out with questions about America, being a journalist and traveling the world on her own. She sounds so interesting. I hope she does come, even though she'll surely be bored out of her mind. I'll write Mr. Harden today. Johan is not comfortable writing letters, especially in English. He agrees that we should invite Mr. Harden to stay here if he decides to come. After all, there are no guest houses in Grovik, and our spare room is rarely used. Also, I have to admit, having a visitor from America sounds terribly exciting. August 5th. This morning I had a boiled egg and buttered toast, after Johan told me I was being silly and that I do not need to lose any weight, seeing as we're not in London and no one cares. That's the spirit. I wrote Mr. Harden to invite him to stay at the house if he decides to come. I'm terribly excited. I do worry for his sister. I wonder where she could be. August 9th. There was an argument in the shop earlier today. Frederick was yelling at poor Astrid, claiming their goats had been grazing on his land. I wanted to speak up, but knew it'd only make him angrier. August 10th. Johan went across the fjord this morning to purchase some necessities, including new fabrics, and to pick up the post. The letters have been piling up in the store. I sometimes worry the world has completely forgotten about us. August 17th. I finished another dress today. This one is for myself. There are no customers anymore. No one here needs another dress, and it's been ages since we visited the city. I hardly know anyone there, and who would want their dresses made in Grovik when they can have one tailored in Alsund? I feel lonely today. I miss my dear Margaret so much after all these years. August 20th. I think Ruth is hiding something from me. She's been awfully secretive. She goes off on her own even more than usual, and her clothes are filthy. I don't mind her playing and exploring, of course. I always did regret Margaret and I not being allowed to run free when we were little. Ruth says she's just looking for flowers and pretty rocks. I shouldn't worry so much. August 21st. Simon stopped by today with a gift for Ruth. A whole bar of chocolate. He's a sweet boy, but Frederick would be furious if he knew. August 22nd. I asked Ruth if she plays up by Frederick's farm or near the old mine. She promised she doesn't. I've never had reason not to trust her, but I still feel she's hiding something from me. I looked at her drawings while she was out. She's got such an imagination. September 5th. We received another letter from Mr. Harden. He'll be here in October, as planned. I look forward to having someone else to speak with, if only for a few days. Not that Johan isn't good company, 
but we have little to converse about outside of our daily routines. There's been no sign of Mr. Harden's sister yet. If she left Alcind weeks ago, where could she be? She may well have decided to stop along the way. We've heard nothing, but we so rarely speak with anyone outside Grovik these days. I do hope she's alright. I would hate for Mr. Harden to come all this way to no avail. Ruth is still being secretive. I know she's hiding something. One of these days, I'll follow her. <laughs> September 9th. No church service again today. The vicar hasn't been back since the memorial service in July. Johan believes he won't be back, and that he's given up on Grovik like everyone else. I think I'm coming down with a cold. September 15th. Someone damaged our boat during the night. That's the third one this month. Johan suspects Frederick, of course. I fear something's bubbling to the surface again after all these years. I'm not at all feeling well and spent most of yesterday and today in bed. Ruth was sweet and brought me potato soup and tea with honey and milk. September 18th. She has left us. Our dearest Ruth is gone. I cannot believe it was Simon's doing. He too is now gone, and with him all hope Grovik had left in it. Jesus. So is that this place, uh, is that what they were talking about when they said when the children died, this place lost all hope? Was it Simon and Ruth? I wonder if those were the only children on the whole island. I mean, Christ, it could be. It's a small island. Man, look at that deep red color outside. It's amazing. Almost no wind. Flag is just kind of hanging down limply. to go to bed, huh? I don't think there's any reason to go into these other rooms. I've already explored them. I don't think there were any other notes that I couldn't read at the time. Yeah. Let's go downstairs, back to the couch we slept on. I think that's where Edward wanted to sleep again. Look exhausted. Go to bed, Edward. I'll tuck you in. Okay. Uh, how do I? How do I go to bed? Why can't I interact with it? feel restless. You should sleep. I'm not sure I can. But yes, uh, I'll try. In a bit. Am I missing something here? Can't, like, change my clothes or anything. What the heck? <laughs> I don't understand. Uh... Oh, did I need to do that first? What are you doing? Betty will want these back. I don't think it's healthy. Not now, to... please. I'm exhausted. Oh yeah, I did have to do that. Weird. Quite the day, huh? I'm ready to pass out. Where will you sleep? Uh, I'll be up for a while. My mind's simply racing. Don't stay up late. Wake me if you hear the Fretlands arriving. Of course. 
And I'll keep my eyes open for any ghosts that might want to haunt you in your sleep. There are no... Hush now. Sleep. Did we actually sleep all the way through the night? <laughs> Looks like it. Lucy, 